When we think about all the things that God can do, we also recognize there are certain things He cannot do. God cannot lie. God cannot break promises. And when God lays down certain principles and laws, He cannot violate them. And one of the great truths that we see is that it requires for us to be in a right relationship, it requires us to also have had a proper scriptural baptism. Now this is an interesting discussion because of all the things that we talk about in regarding Christianity, this seems to be one, at least on the surface, where there's some general agreement in the religious world because in one form or another, most religious groups that consider themselves to be Christians practice some form of baptism. But once you get past the surface, we see that there's a lot of differences out there. And for me to say, no, 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 there's just one type of baptism that is accepted is something that very much goes against the cultural trend. I would like to say, you know, just as long as you're obeying God, it's all good. But there's a passage of Scripture that forces me to realize, no, you must be baptized in the proper manner. Acts chapter 19, Paul is going through the upper regions and comes to Ephesus and he finds some disciples there and he asks them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you were baptized? They didn't know what he was talking about. Now, Paul is an apostle. He has the ability to lay hands on them and to impart the miraculous indwelling of the Holy Spirit. He, it's possible that they could have been baptized by someone who was not an apostle. So he's asking this question. They said, we've not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. Red flag goes up. He realizes there's a problem. And so Paul says, and then what were you baptized? They say, according, we were baptized according to the baptism of John. Now listen to what uh, Paul has to say about this in verse 4. John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him. That is on Christ. Now when they heard this, verse 5, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Here's a group of people that had been baptized according to a baptism that at one time had been authorized, but by this point was no longer authorized. You think about some of the baptisms that are out in the world today that have never been authorized. The Great Commission baptism that we read about in the Bible is for the forgiveness of sins. Acts chapter 2 verse 38, Acts 22 and verse number 16, Galatians 3 and verse number 27. And we're going to look some more at this. But I want you to understand, it's impossible to God, for God to save us without proper baptism. Join us again next week.